Welcome to Luxuriously Poor, and I hope you're truly having a blessed day. And if you're not subscribed, please take this time to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up because that pushes it out. And I'm doing this really to help other people. I think things are going to get absolutely horrifying. And every little bit of information is helpful to people out there. And I want to talk to you about, I know there's a lot of people who think that it's, gas is never going to get so high that they can't afford it, that they'll always have enough gas to heat their homes. They'll have enough gas to cook with. They'll have enough gas to put in the cars. You're not guaranteed any of that. You're not in control. My mother moved from one house to another, not realizing that the heat that she had to heat for the winter was electric. There was no gas. Her electric bill was $450. One month. She was hitting up the family, her grandson, which was my son, to help her pay the bill because she couldn't afford it. She never dreamed that it would cost her that much to heat her home, a small home. I mean, she lives in a trailer in, in the town because she's old and my father passed away. And uh, she lives by, well, she lives with a nephew of mine now, but... Um, she had a very hard time. She couldn't pay the bill. Um, that's what's coming. And there's nothing that any of us can do about it. There really isn't. All we can do is try to do enough within ourselves to prevent it from happening to us. In other words, well, we're prepared enough that if they do it, we're not desperately unprepared where... It, we get our gas or electric cut off because electricity is far more expensive than gas. Now, I'm already doing things myself. I One of these that I never, ever wait until they make a decision on what they're going to do because, like I said, I'm luxuriously poor. And so I have to think way ahead of everybody else. And today I'm going to show you something that I made. Now I'm going to show you how to make a grill from a simple grill that you can cook on from a roasting pan. All you need to do is put a pipe plate in the bottom. You don't have to, but I prefer to. A grid on top. And you've made yourself a cooking surface that you can cook on. Now I wanted more than one cooking surface. The kickoff grill is not enough. Now where I'm at is enclosed. Wind can't get through, rain can't get through, so I can cook no matter what the weather outside is like. Now, in this little pan, later I'll get a, like a cake pan, a cheap one from Dollar Tree or something and put it in the bottom. But for day, today, I have an aluminum pie plate that I just stuck in there. Now, these are some fire starters that my son, he bought me a couple of boxes because I, you know, would try to start the fire with little sticks or a cotton ball dipped in Vaseline. And he was like, this is much easier. Try this, Mom. And I'm going to tell him, hey, pick me up some more. And I'm just going to start the fire with this to, by putting it underneath and uh, get the fire going good so that I can cook on the top of this. Now... I can tell you because I've already noticed something when I tried to put the top on it. It slides. So I found a couple of old clamps that you would probably, they probably were to uh, uh, battery, uh, you know, cables. And probably the cables are, were no good anymore or something. But around here we don't throw anything away. And so I'm going to clamp the top down to the, roasting pan here but my nut or butter you wait he will fix something so I won't have to use the clamps I know him he will fix it well I'll be able to lift that top up and yet at the same time it won't slide and move around on me but here it is I got that start fire going with that little starters which really makes me happy makes it so simple and so easy now, I had washed the inside of this, but I guess I missed a spot there on the outside. Uh-oh, you know, but oh well. It doesn't matter, really. You know, 
it's on the outside and I'm not going to be laying any food right there. But I got it going here. And I'm first going to cook some what they call poblano chilies on the top of this. And put the grid on. It is the top to a pet taxi. Not a top the door, I'm sorry. To a pet taxi. And that's what I'm going to use for the top here. But let's get going. Okay, I want you to see this. I'm roasting. This is what I'm going to make for dinner. And I'm probably going to do it right here at the end when I finish cooking breakfast. And I finish cooking. I'm roasting these right now to peel the skins off of them. I'm going to stuff this with cheese. And so I'm roasting them right now out here. And of course, see that fire? But when you put this on top, it'll start to smoke a little bit. But that's okay. I just want you to see... I am preparing my dinner now, and then when I finish this, I will be preparing my breakfast, and I will show you what it will be. Now, I want you to see this and look at this, and you'll see these little spots here that almost make it look like it's, the cast iron is not clean, because uh, I'm going to cook in this, and I know it's going to show up in the video when I cook the sausage, and you're going to say, her skillet's not clean. Yeah, it is. It's just that uh, it's not coated very well. See, I cook sausage in it, and then I scrub the sausage <laughs> and the skillet. My hands are a little bit wet, but and that's what makes that mark. But uh, the skillet's clean. It's just lost some of its coating. I don't worry about it because this is my sausage skillet. I have an egg skillet. I have different ones. It'll get its coating back the moment I throw some sausage on it, but... It'll lose its coating again because the sausage has a tendency to stick a little bit and I have a tendency to scrub it. And this is a skillet that I let my son use when he comes over because he ruins my cast iron. So I keep this one especially for him and then I use it for sausage. I just want to let you know that so when you see it you're not thinking, what's wrong with that skillet? Okay, I have a skillet on here because I'm fixing to put sausage. Now, over here is... A whole bag of what is called poblano peppers, which I roasted them. I have two over here to the side that are left. And uh, I finished roasting these. Uh, this one looks like it might be ready. Okay. Let me move this over a little more. I'm actually going to make two different things for breakfast or for because it's very common in our house that we don't all eat the same thing especially me because I try to stay away from a whole lot of carbs like I've told you guys because of my knees so I'll have sausage and eggs while some others will have tacos so for now I'm just starting to heat this pan up you know just barely getting it on the fire so, we'll come back when it starts cooking more. As you can see, it's working. Now, it hasn't been on the grill for long. The skillet hasn't been. So. And the cast iron takes a while to heat up. It does, but once it heats up, it holds the fire very well. And so, it works. You can cook. Now, I put clamps on this because this is a lid or door, I should say, to a pet taxi. Pet taxi is busted, it's no good, but the door's gonna lay around here forever. I picked it up and says, hey, I can throw this over the top of this and I can actually cook on this. Yes, I have my kickoff grill, but hey, this gives me more than one cooking surface. And I want to say this. A lot of people say, well, you know, you can cook on your regular grill. You can, but there is a problem because, see, your heat source is not as concentrated as this is. In other words, your charcoal ends up spreaded, spread, it spreads out too far in a big grill. And uh, so you don't have as much heat coming up. As you can see, the heat underneath, underneath this is very close to the pan. So you don't have to use as much wood or even charcoal to cook with. Now, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna make a couple eggs, but we gotta get this cooked first and then I'm gonna make tacos. Yes, my family eats tacos for breakfast. 
<laughs> they don't necessarily eat breakfast food for breakfast. Okay, as you can see here, it is ready. The sausage is ready. Now I'm going to put my next skillet on here. I'm going to move this all the way. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to get my next skillet ready. And I have lard here. We're going to melt this and start the tacos, okay? Okay, I don't want to hold this too long. I don't want to melt my camera here. But as you can see, I am starting the tacos. Kind of hard to hold this, the camera, and the spatula and everything else. There we go. Okay, now it's my turn to make my eggs. The tacos are here. My family likes the tacos a little on the soft side. They don't like them super crispy. So, I make them how they like them, okay? But, uh... Now I'm making my eggs. Okay, I have two eggs now. Had to break the other one. I had to put my camera down. So I'm going to have eggs and sausage for breakfast. <laughs> 